Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. This video is sponsored by ToyHacks.com. They're your one-stop shop for reproduction decals for your vintage G1 Transformers and upgrade decals for your modern bots. Weaponry for your figures from the Toy Hacks Armory and great looking backdrops for your display from Toy Stages. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another Generation 1 Transformers review. And this is a very special review because this is my 5th anniversary special review. Yes! Five years ago today, I uploaded my very first video review, and Patriot Prime Reviews was born. Now, a few days ago was when I first created my channel, but I didn't upload any videos until October 4th. So that just blows my mind that I've been doing this for five years, and I have to give a huge shout out to each and every one of you who has followed my channel, subscribed to my channel, watched my videos, you comment, you're friends with me on Facebook. This last five years has been amazing. Not to mention all the fantastic people that I have met, I have interviewed, and have become great friends with. Never in a million years would I have imagined that this channel, this YouTube thing that I created on a dare would have blown up into what it is today. So thank you, thank you so much. So I was racking my brain about what figure I could review for my fifth anniversary special, and I figured, go big or go home. This is Transformers Generation 1 Ultra Magnus, first released in 1987, but this one I have right here is the Encore release from 2013. And if I recall, this was the very last figure released in the Encore line. Now, Fortress Maximus here is one of those figures that is considered a holy grail by many. I mean, he came at the end of the Transformer line in 87, where most of us who started collecting the toys were growing out of the figures. You know, we weren't into them anymore. And this guy came out, and I only remember ever seeing him once on the shelf at either a Hill's or a Roses back in the day, but I never ever got my hands on one or even seen one until my very first Transformers convention in 2013, Shardicon in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I remember when this figure was announced uh, on Big Bad Toy Store as a pre-order, I jumped on it. And I think this was my very first pre-order figure. And if I remember correctly, I think he was about $350. So real quick, a brief history of Fortress Maximus. I know he was a main character in the Japanese continuity, but I'm going to focus on U.S. Uh, G1 fiction. Fortress Maximus here first appeared uh, in the Rebirth episode number one, but as Cerebros. Fortress Maximus himself didn't exist yet. He didn't show up until part three, the very last episode of the Generation 1 series, he was created by Spike and Cerebros for, uh, using an abandoned Nebulos city. So he showed up, he fought Scorponok, that was pretty much the it. Now in Marvel Comics, he played a much bigger part. First appearing in issue one in the Headmasters Limited series, it was shown that he was the commander of the Autobots on Cybertron, and he was just fed up with fighting and he took a bunch of Autobots, and they escaped to Nebulos, which is a very peaceful, weapon-free planet. Of course, the Nebulons freaked out with these giant robots showing up, and Fortress Maximus showed, in a show of good faith, gave the Nebul Nebulons his head. He removed his head and said, hey, here's my head. Let us live in peace. Unfortunately, the Decepticons found out where they were, and the cons were led, of course, by Scorponok, the cons came to Nebulo, started raising all kinds of hell, and the uh, Nebulons were like, how can we fight them? And they came up with the idea of the Headmaster and Target Master technology. Now, the Headmaster partner of Fortress Maximus in the comics at first was a Nebulon named Galen, and he kind of looked like a black-haired 
Prince Adam. And Galen led Fortress Maximus against the Decepticons. And finally, they defeated them, and they fled Nebulos and came to Earth. Fortress Maximus and the Headmasters became regulars in the regulars in the regular series in issue number 38, where they took on the Decepticons in Mount St. Hillary after the Ark had left. And Galen was killed. But Spike, who was there searching for his brother Buster, was able to take Galen's control helmet and used it to control Fortress Maximus to beat Scorponok. The Autobots, seeing this, told Spike that they would welcome him, welcome him into the Autobots, and they did the headmaster process on him, and that's why we have Spike now as the uh, headmaster partner of Fortress Maximus. Fortress Maximus still maintained leadership of his headmasters, but he never gained full leadership of the Autobots. I mean, that fell to Optimus Prime, who became Power Master Optimus Prime. Fortress Maximus, kind of after Power Master Prime showed up, kind of went into the background for a while, up until issue number 79, where the Ark had crashed on Earth after the big battle with Unicron, and Galvatron escaped. And Spike bonded with Fortress Maximus one last time due to, to, due to defeat Galvatron by throwing him in a lake. He beat him up and threw him in a frozen lake, and that's how they defeated Galvatron in Marvel G1. So pretty much that is a abridged history of Fortress Maximus in the cartoon of Marvel Comics. Without further ado, let's take a look at this awesome Transformer. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now we'll start things off by taking a look at Fortress Maximus's two drones, Gasket and Gromit. Let's take a look at Gasket first. Gasket is some sort of fast moving attack vehicle, and I do mean fast moving. This guy rolls across the table. He just zips right along. He's got free rolling wheels on die cast axles, and man, you can hear that, they fly. Now, I guess he could be a six-wheeled vehicle. You can see another wheel molded in there on the side, but I don't count that. That's a spare tire, spare tires as far as I'm concerned. Very, very simple little vehicle. You got some minimal molded detailing right there showing windows and looks like little vents or exhaust right there. A couple of stickers. You got red and blue decals on either side and decals in here inside of the guns. Now, something funny about the guns is they have to be positioned on like this. You'll understand the sticker decals here in a moment. The sticker decals have to face inside in order for Spike to fit in the vehicle to ride him, and he secures really good. So Spike can patrol around inside gasket here. Now, if you have the weapons reversed, so the decals is on the outside, the way these are molded, they stick out a little farther and you can't get Spike to fit. So the decals have to fit on the inside. Now, Gasket does have visible robot face syndrome right there. We'll go into that here in a second. Now let's bring in Gromit. Gromit is some sort of track vehicle or tank, even more simple than Gasket. You got track vehicle or track decals there on either side, molded in guns, and free rolling wheels, just little clip on wheels on the inside. He rolls, but not as good as gasket. And you can tell looking at him, those are some legs laying down. So maybe a few more decals to really make this guy pop as a vehicle would work, but you don't really use these as a vehicle because they have a combined form. We're gonna bring in gasket once again we are going to remove the weapons and I noticed this earlier putting those weapons in do give stress marks to this figure which is very unfortunate so you've got gasket right here grommet and you just slide these two together like so forming a robot and then you're going to take the blasters now here's where the sticker decals come in you got the thumb Thumbs right there, so you do have a right and a left, so you make sure the stickers are on the outside or the side facing forward. 
go ahead and peg those into the side. Now these fit a lot better. There's no stress marks here. Peg those guns into the side and boom, there you have COG. And COG is a very generic, simple robot. A little more, bit more sticker decals or sticker details right here on the chest. There's an Autobot decal and I gave him silver eyes. At least I think I, I think that's a Toy Hex decal. It's been a long time since I messed with this guy. I think that is a scrap decal that I gave him so he could have some eyes. And I know the Autobot decal there is Toy Hacks. The rest are the decals that came with the figure. And Cog also comes with a little blaster, a very well sculpted little blaster. Peg that into his hand. Now you can leave that pegged into his hand for the vehicle mode. It just kind of looks weird. But there is Cog articulation. Man, he's got none except for these arms that can do a complete 360, but they may fall off. So that's pretty much it for the two drones. Now let's bring in Spike. We looked at him briefly just a second ago. Spike is, of course, the headmaster partner of Fortress Maximus. Lots of great molded details on Spike and pretty good paint applications as far as the face is concerned. You can actually make out the face on the Headmaster. Spike has got some sick abs right there and he, he's pretty basic. I mean, he is just like any other G1 Headmaster. Articulation, the arms can go forward. Usually I don't like to mess with the arms on a Headmaster figure because you got a square peg pushing up against a square back. I'm always afraid the pins will break. At least I don't do it on any, at least I don't do the articulation on any of my vintage G1s, but this guy I'm not too worried about. I think they fix the issues he has. The legs can also go forward in a sitting position and the knees can bend. So that's pretty much it for Spike. Now Spike is the headmaster partner of Fortress Maximus, but technically he's the headmaster partner of Cerebros here, who turns into the head of Fortress Maximus. So it's a, it's an interesting relationship. So to transform Spike into the head of Cere Cerebros, man, I'm terrible at this this morning. Just fold him over, flip this flap up on his back, and there's the head of Cerebros. You're gonna peg it in right here on top of the figure. Let's go ahead and flip this down so we can watch the technical readout. Plug that in. And there we go, his readouts are across the board. Speed, strength, and intelligence. I'm pretty sure those readouts are for Fortress Maximus and not Cerebros here. Now, as you can see, Cerebros is a far cry from how he looked in the cartoon. The head sculpt looks more like Fortress Maximus than what we saw on TV, but looks pretty good. It seems to be just a little too big for the body, but it's okay, I'll give him a pass. My biggest complaint with Cerebros here, this is one screwy looking transformer. And by that I mean, look at all the damn screw holes on the front of this figure. You've got three in the arms, you got one, two, three, four on the main body, you got three in the legs, that is just very off-putting to me. Minimal stickers, Autobot symbol right here, decal right there that I do believe I may have gotten the wrong position or upside down. I wasn't that good applying decals back in 2013. And then you got decals down here on the legs. Now with the 2013 Encore Fortress Maximus, Cerebros comes with two weapons. He has his gun. Let's keep trying to put the gun in before showing it off. Very nicely sculpted, put that in his right hand here and he comes with this black sword that looks more like a paddle. I think this is the extra feature or the extra weapon that the original Fortress Maximus did not come with. So there you go, you got Cerebros all armed and ready for battle. Articulation for Cerebros, the arms can do a complete 360, the legs can go out and they can go in and they got a rotation and there is a bend right there for transformation if i can get it this figure there we go is really really tight so let's go ahead and get cerebros transformed into the head of fortress maximus 
We're going to remove the weapons, fold the fists in, and you're going to bring the arms in towards the chest. Now we're going to bend those legs down just like so. And if you look right there's a peg or a slot that's going to line up with the peg right there. Just peg that into place. Oh, wow, these are so tight. I mean, this, these, this figure has had tight joints since I got him. And now you're gonna take this flap right here, flip this up, and there you have the head of Fortress Maximus. That is a very G1 looking head, and I love it. Lots of great sculpted details all the way around, along with some decent stickers. You got the stickers right there for the horns, and up here on the crest. Another change from the original toy to this figure right here, the eyes were decals on the G1 figure. This figure, they are paint applications, which is always a plus. And look all the way around. You do got some folded up arms on the back. At least all the screw holes are back there instead of the front of the face or the front of the head, which as you can see now makes sense why they were all on Cerebros's robot mode. So love the head sculpt, looks great. Very, very cartoon and comic book accurate. Now, Cerebros has a third mode that we're gonna go ahead and show off because that is gonna be the segue into Fortress Maximus's city mode, is go ahead and flip this section back here, bring the legs out, and then you're gonna rotate them Board. I guess he did have leg rotation. I didn't show that off. So you have this going on. So it looks like a Transformers ATST, but unfortunately, it's a little front heavy. So if it, did, if it did have the proper weight, I guess it could be a vehicle for Spike to roll around in. But this is supposed to be Cerebros's communication center. And what you do with this is plug it right into Fortress Maximus's city mode. So it goes right here along the side and just lock it in place. And there you go. And now may I present to you Fortress Maximus city mode. And this is a pretty big city. You're looking at about two feet from end to end. He is one foot tall and 14 inches wide. So this guy takes up a lot of space. And as you can see, he does great for housing your various G1 figures. I've got mini bots, micro masters, throttle bots, combiner team, and a regular bot over here, hot rod. Now, hot rod is just a little bit too big for Fortress Maximus, but as far as throttle bots, MicroMasters, and mini bots are concerned, he's absolutely perfect size. So now let's take the camera off the tripod and we'll do a shaky cam tour of Fortress Maximus. Now starting here at the front, we've got three different ramps for Transformer figures to interact with. The two on the side have these little red levers right here that you slide forward that will push the vehicle down the ramp. I don't want to throw him off of my table, but they're not spring-loaded. You just move them with your fingers. This one here has a little garage. And then we have one over here on this side for hot rods, so he can slide off as well. But like I said, he fits, but he's just a little bit too big to interact with the base like some of these other figures. So we'll move those back into place. We have I, I think this is a little runway, so I use this for my MicroMaster. So we got a little garage right there with a runway that these guys can take off with. A little garage right here that's a perfect fit for Gromit. And then of course over here we've got, or excuse me, that was Gasket. Then we've got Gromit right here and something I forgot to show earlier. You can peg his blaster in between the legs of the uh, vehicle to make him look more like a tank. And of course, we've got the Cerebros right there. Another ramp here that I'm gonna show off here in a second how this works. A rotating radar dish. Man, that's a lot of excitement right there. 
around the side here we've got I like to think of this as a repair bay or storage area that works great for the MicroMasters and mini box and real quick look at all of the nice sculpted details all along the city you've got the windows the vents grading there's all kinds of cool things big Autobot insignia right there on the tower of course you got the guns here on the side but those are antennas in city mode so yeah this thing is pretty slick so moving on around actually let's get some of these bots out of the way so up here I utilize this he's got these towers You've got two towers on each side I use these as a helipad now he actually has a helipad turn him around so you have a helipad right there but blades the only Autobot helicopter I own I mean he fits all right but when he takes off the blades gonna hit that gun he's gonna crash so that's perfect for Cosmos so moving on down this side we have a prison a Decepticon jail so open this up and that stores figures you know around the size of bludgeon a headmaster such as Grax or a micromaster like blackjack right there so you can lock these guys up and shut the stairs totally forget about it or forget about them now mine unfortunately has a stress mark right there and that was there when I opened the figure along the back we've got more little garages right there and big old massive cannons and these pop out just like so on the back of the city there's also a cockpit but that's going to be more utilized for his vehicle mode now the final gimmick right here we've got this little crank and what that's for if you look right in here there's a little section let me go ahead and turn this all the way around this is hard to do so let's get him all the way around so you can look right through that little section right there i'm going to get a mini bot we'll get tailgate so what you can do is drive tailgate up inside of here so i can get this working left-handed okay so now you can see tailgate right inside there so i'm going to go around to where the crank is you crank the crank and there's an elevator that's going to lift tailgate up to the top a lot easier for a kid my big old meat hooks it's hard to get in there so now we'll turn this around get that angled so i can get this cranked tailgate should get up there he's up the top there's a little button right here you push and tailgate zips right down the ramp now you don't have to leave cerebros right here transformed in his communication center you can actually pull that out and there's a couple flaps right here flip these up cover that up and that way you can use cerebros in his robot mode to interact with fortress maximus so there you go guys there is fortress maximus in city mode let's get him transformed into his spaceship mode so now with me here you can see how big fortress maximus is man i am six foot four this playset, this figure is a beast and transforming him is a beast too because this figure right here has some of the tightest ratchet joints ever and he was like that right out of the packaging so to transform him to his spaceship mode the first thing we'll do is remove the guns we'll put these to the side go ahead and take the ramps and flip these up there's little tabs right there the thing will line up with little tabs here on the ramp just gotta squeeze those into place here on the side you've got the helipad and you're gonna kind of lift up slightly and bring this around now another thing that i found out that this reissue has or this encore has that the original didn't is there is a tab to lock this in place the original didn't have that so once this is flipped around there is a little green section here flip this up now this is the fun part go ahead and fold these up make sure everything is attached 
you're going to bring the legs up and down. And then what we're going to do, oh my God, uh, you'll rotate around uh, just like so. Keep the legs straight or the power straight. You can tell it's a leg. Jesus. All right, so we've got that going on. Bring the this or the foot down right there, and we're gonna do the same thing here on the other side. This is so much fun. So bring this out. Oh, oh there's some entertainment right here. Oh Lord! Bring that around. Extend the leg. Bring the leg down. Woo! Oh my God. Oh. All right, bring those sections down like so. There is a cannon right here. You're gonna pop this up and bring this around. There's a double barrel cannon hid within the helipad. Let's see. That's good. That's good. Fold this red section here up and bring these doors up, closing off the elevator. And now we'll take the cannons, reattach them to the tower, like so. And there we have Fortress Maximus in his spaceship mode. It's more or less the robot laying down in this thing. Where is my tape measure? Here we go from end to end. 30 inches, so just over two feet. This is massive. And look underneath, he does have wheels. So, you know, you can roll him along no problem. So here we are once again with another shaky cam look at Fortress Maximus's vehicle mode or spaceship mode. As I said, you can tell it's just a robot lying down. Now I wish the vehicle mode had a little bit more playability just like city mode. I mean, it's got a few things, but really not a lot to write home about. You do have storage right here for the drones. They fit in these little garages and there's also as I like to say, garages right here. So you can put vehicles inside like Gold Bug there. And it works better for the mini bots or mini cons, excuse me, micro masters. You've got the cannons right here, double cannons on each side and this cannon right here that was on the helipad. You can also flip this up and angle it forward so you kind of like have a cannon with a shield. So Cerebros can man that cannon, if you will. Bring that back down. Up here, we do have the cockpit. Get that opened up and you have Spike in a sitting position. Just put him right in, shut the door. So now you have Spike commanding the Fortress Maximus ship. You got the two big guns right here. Along the back, I think I mistransformed this part right here. You can bring up what I call the airstrip, fold that up, close this around, kind of streamlines the back more. Not much going on on the rear of the vehicle. You still got the radar dish right there. So not much playability, but you do have a massive ship, a spaceship or watercraft as it was shown in Marvel Comics. So now let's get the vehicle mode transformed into Fortress Maximus's robot mode. All right, to start things off, once again, we're gonna remove the weapons from the tower. And I think my favorite part about transforming this figure from ship mode to robot mode, I don't have to fool with those damn hips again. So let's go ahead and knock the double barrel cannons down. We're gonna stand the Fortress Maximus up, flip these section up, and there you have his feet. Now, take this little section right here, the helipad. You're gonna fold the cannon up and in and bring this around. It's gonna peg into place on the back of the leg. Now, you're gonna rotate these sections down 
just like so. You've got the robot fist right here. Rotate those. And go ahead and bring the arms all the way up. Just like they were earlier, because what you're going to need to do is separate this tower section right here. So just pull this apart and swing it around up and under the arms like so and it will tab into place then bring the arms back down take this ramp section right here you can see it if i am still in frame take this ramp section here bring that down that's going to tab into place maybe yeah, there we go that'll tab into place Make sure the ramp section right here flips down to cover that big hole. Okay, I had to adjust that camera for you a little bit better. I should have taken Spike out of the command center, so there he is. Shut that back up. Take Cerebros, who I've already turned into the head of Fortress Maximus. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall Spike. So put that in the bottom of Fortress Maximus' head. And then you just simply plug in Fortress Maximus' head in the top of the figure. It locks in place. We'll go ahead and give Fortress Maximus his giant gun, which, I mean, look at this thing. I can almost wield it. So there is his big rifle there. And then, of course, he has this double barrel cannon that can go in the other fist. And there you have Fortress Maximus all armed and ready for battle. What a beast of a Transformers figure. This guy was the reigning champ of Titans up until I believe it was Titans Return, not Titans Return, the 30th anniversary Metroplex. This was your biggest Transformer figure and he is 20, let's see, get good measurement. 22 inches tall, so almost two feet. An awesome, awesome figure. Just a pain in the butt to transform. And I left the radar dish on, so unplug that. So let's, uh, oh yeah, almost forgot. Another cool accessory that this Fortress Maximus came with was the Master Sword. And how this plugs in, it's got this little handle right here. So you peg it in just like you did with the weapons, and it's got this little section right here that keeps it from falling out. So check that out. That is awesome. I could almost wield that sword. And then what I do with the double barrel cannon right here, I just put it on top of his shoulder for display purposes, and there we go. So now let's take a closer look at Fortress Maximus in robot mode. In robot mode, Fortress Maximus is so impressive. Big and bulky and heavy, and he just looks awesome. I didn't really go over all the details before, but look at the sticker details right there on the shoulders. Big Autobot insignia right there. Sticker decals on the arms, the stomach. He's got his little crank in an odd place. More sticker decals sticker details on the knees the double barrel cannons and for the feet now you can still store gasket and grommet in the toes in robot mode but i really don't dig that also make sure you don't forget about your prisoners i still got the my prisoners in there from earlier uh, funny story a few years back my nephew was here playing around fortress maximus put figures in the jail and then left. He didn't tell me about them. And I thought I had lost some of my Headmaster figures. No, I was messing with Fortress Maximus, I found them. So you don't want to forget about your figures. Now, you talk about armed and ready for battle. Fortress Maximus has guns for days. So go ahead and lift the arms up. I'm really trying to do this one-handed. And he has these massive cannons on his waist or hidden in his waist and there goes the sword it's not designed to flip upside down so got the massive cannons right there and since the sword is out of his hand anyway rotate the fist around and you see this little trap door flip that around 
there's double cannons here on the inside. If I can get my fingernails in. So you've got that. Then up here on his forearm, flip that open, double barrel cannons. And of course those are on both arms. Then you go down to the knees. You saw those before. He's got the big cannons right there. So this guy has got guns for days, which pop off, but you can reinstall pretty easy. Man, this is so hard to do left-handed. So yeah, this guy is armed to the teeth. And right here, we can show you closer how I just lay this on top. It's got this little groove right here that works with the peg. So as long as you don't mess with him just for display purposes only, I leave that right there. But you can put it in his hand if you choose. Of course, he's got pegs on the other side. So you can kind of peg this cannon in however you choose. Lots of detail on those too. I like the big scope on this one. Now, another cool thing with Fortress Maximus is right here, you can flip this down. You've got Cerebros' gun, Cerebros' sword, and the radar dish. And now that's stored and put up so you don't have to worry about losing them. So yeah, Fortress Maximus, a very impressive G1 figure. I love this guy. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is 1987's Generation 1 Fortress Maximus with Generation 1 Optimus Prime, Generation 1 Power Master Optimus Prime, Generation 1 Scorponok, and Transformers Kingdom Arc. For even more size comparisons, here is 1987's Generation 1 Cerebros and Cog with Generation 1 Optimus Prime, Generation 1 Hot Rod, Generation 1 Goldbug, and Siege Cog. So, does a 1987 Generation 1 Fortress Maximus belong in your collection? Absolutely. This is a great Transformers toy. It's just tons of fun, huge robot mode, great city mode. Eh, the vehicle mode's kind of iffy, but man, this figure is so cool. So if you see one for a decent price, don't hesitate. Pick him up. You're going to love this guy, whether it be the original G1 or the Encore version. This guy's awesome. I mean, I love him. Now, I did forget to go over the articulation. He's a G1. The arms can do a complete 360, and he's got an elbow bend and wrist rotation. That is it. So, a great figure and highly recommended. Guys, once again, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for watching me over the last five years, and I hope you stick around for the next five years. And I've got something really big coming up from Toy Hacks. Uh, they're going to work with me for something special, so stay tuned for that. And man, I appreciate you guys so much. And I, I just don't have the words. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I do have a super thanks button and I also offer channel memberships. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my current channel members because it's support like yours that helps keep this channel going. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime signing out. Hello!